a CISO in the boardroom with Ruby Aronshvili, so founder and CEO. So the role of the Chief Information Security Officer has evolved dramatically in recent years. And with cyber risk escalating, CISOs need to step out of the server room and come into the boardroom. Now, we've been saying this for many years at this event, and I'm really glad that you're here to back this up because security decisions should be aligned to support the business goals, and security can even become a key marketing tool in 2022. So Ruby is a serial cybersecurity entrepreneur and a national cybersecurity expert. He's a founding member of the Israeli Army's Red Team and Incident Response Team. Ruby serves as a trusted advisor for executives in leading Fortune 500 companies and is certified by the US Department of Homeland Security as a world-class ICS and SCADA cybersecurity expert. It's an honor to have you with us here today. The stage is yours. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, everyone. I hope that you are enjoying the event so far. I'm sure that uh, you had a lengthy session, session, so it seems like you are refreshed after some kind of, uh, I guess, coffee and cake. That's good. Um, so as mentioned, um, you know, I started my journey in life in a more army organization, government organization. It's a little bit different approach there, as you know, there are different objectives. Uh, you're trying to get into a situation that counter terror events are much more important, for example, than money or any financial kind of uh, outcome in the end. And that's something that is was, at least to me, completely different when I left the army and founded SAI in 2012. Um, over the years, you know, I've seen quite significant change in the approach when it comes to the CISO role in general in the organization, which became much more important over the years. And with some events that happened throughout the time, we've seen how the CISO role goes more and more upwards towards the executive team members and, of course, to the board of directors. Now, the reason for that is that at some point, as we can see here, C-level executives, specifically CEOs and board of directors, they became, in a way, personally accountable for cybersecurity implications. Uh, of course, uh, different uh, situations that we've seen in the past uh, made some CEOs, um, you know, either to leave or to get fired. Uh, and some board of directors took personally um, the hit by uh, a cybersecurity incident in their organization. That's why the concept of cybersecurity became much more proactive when it comes to the board level discussion. Um, so during the last, I would say, two to three years, I've been around 300 different board meetings when we help organizations present their own objectives, capabilities, and so on. And we've seen how the concept of cybersecurity discussion in the board evolved, changed, and how it in a way became much more mature. And I'm going to take you through today some of the things that we see, how you can measure even by the questions that you get in the board meeting, how mature your board or your organization is when it comes to cybersecurity. And in the end, of course, give you some practical, maybe, approach to how you're going to present uh, in your, maybe, board meeting and get first the board aligned with uh, the situation of your organization, with the visib clear visibility into the organizational risk. And more than that, making sure that the relevant budget, the relevant investment in the organization is going to be made. So from the board meetings that I took part in, right, um, there are mainly three maybe questions that are being repeated over and over again. Some of them, as you can see, or most of them, are not that mature. And you know, the question of are we 100% secure or how someone can hurt us, is it even possible that's something that, of course, when you understand the cybersecurity implications, you understand that that's not a relevant question. However, as a CISO in the boardroom, you need to be able to answer that in a way. 
I can tell you that we see more than 50% of the board meetings that we took part in, this question is being asked at least by a single board member. Sometimes you see a board discussion there that, hey, this is not the right question. Let's make sure that we are asking the right questions. But that's a question that is there. Now, when you go to a little bit more mature organizations, you get a question that, why are we spending so much? Hey, nothing happened this year. Why do we need this security operations center? Why do we need 12 people working in shifts? Nothing happens. No one wants to attack us. We are secure, right? That's, that's a discussion that you can hear in the boardroom. And again, you need to be able to react accordingly. And you know, say, hey guys, you don't understand anything. That's not the right approach, of course. It wouldn't work. And of course, you need to find yourself as a CISO sitting there and trying to explain. So that's, of course, an important one. In other organizations, and again, I'm going uh, upwards in the maturity level of the questions, here we see already a different question um, about resource allocation. So we understand that cybersecurity is important. We understand that that's something that needs to be done. We understand that we invest in cybersecurity. And now the question is, are we investing in the right places? Which is a good question in a way, but that's something that, of course, we see very rarely. <coughs> Unfortunately, less than 10% of the board meetings that we've seen, and that's our internal statistics. Um, but um, those kind of questions in the last years actually pushed CISOs to start and develop um, different interfaces, dashboards, data collection, which I'll get to it in a second. Um, and that was a very interesting movement that we've seen in the market. But now before we go there, I think that the question that we need to aim the board towards, if I need to choose one question, and of course there are several, one question that will be maybe the right one, is whether our cybersecurity efforts, strategy, investment is aligned with our business objectives. That actually includes all the things that we mentioned before whether we are secure, are we protecting the right things, are we investing in the right places, and how cybersecurity is not only protecting our organization, but also supporting our marketing, and uh, in a way even go-to-market approach by differentiating the organization with cybersecurity capabilities. That's something that will be very interesting for the board of directors. As you know, there is sometimes there is a perception that the board of directors discussion needs to be very high level. That's not the point. It should be detailed. It should be detailed in the way that they understand. If we come with something like this, right? We take the NIST framework, they're all familiar with the framework, and we start to measure our maturity level in each and every one of the categories, and we put that in front of the board, that's a detail level that they don't understand. I would say, it maybe in a more brutal way, they don't care, right? So they like details, they love numbers, but not those numbers. So we need to be able to translate the information from that to something that they first can understand so we don't see them looking like this, which we usually see when we see these kind of interfaces. So being able to speak in the board language, that's may maybe the most important part and that's what we are trying to get to today. So let's try to break it down piece by piece. First thing, what is the risk to the organization? Financial, financial risk in general, this is a tricky one. That's a very hard problem. How do you get into a situation that you are able to quantify the cybersecurity risk in a, a monetary uh, way? That means to put a dollar value um, risk near each and every one of, the, of your business critical assets. That's not a simple thing to do. However, there is, a, there is a way to do that. And even if we don't get to dollar value, even putting a simple thing like one, two, three, four, five risk level, but not on the technical um, security controls that we've seen like NIST framework, but really on the business risk. For example, what is the risk for our intellectual property? What is the risk for our business continuity? Privacy. Let's talk about those items that are correlated directly to the business needs. That's something that will be much more relevant to the board of directors. Then, when it comes to benchmark, something that really we see a lot of questions in the board room about benchmark. Okay, we understand that we are at maturity level X, but is it good? We are 
uh, on a scale of CMMI in, uh, according to the, to the NIST framework. Is it good? Is it correlated to the business benchmark? Are we better? Are we worse based to our or compared to our peers in the industry, in the geolocation, in the size of the organizations? Those are good questions. And again, being able to answer them, it's not very difficult, but we need to build our data model, data models to support it. The third item, business access exposure. So as I mentioned before, we are able to identify what are our critical risks in the organization. Again, the technical part of it, whether lateral movement is required, password reuse, weak passwords, or a vulnerability in the server. Again, it's an in interesting discussion, not to the board of directors. The results, the key outcomes out of it, how this technical part, this technical vulnerability that you found here, how it's going to influence to impact my web application platform that generates $20 million a day. What is the correlation there? That's what we need to find. And being able to do that, <coughs> that's something that following this structure, or a structure of translating technical risk to business risk and building your cybersecurity program correlated and aligned to the business needs, what we call, love to call risk-based approach, that's something that is very nice on paper, can be, of course, implemented nicely also to support the needs for the board of directors, but in order to do that, a specific method should work. The last one, and I'll talk about the method in a second, the last item that I wanted to take into consideration is how we take the risk profiling, or what we love to say, threat modeling, right? How do we take it <coughs> from a very technical discussion to a discussion that is very simply understood by the board of directors. You know, we've done that multiple times and in th at the beginning of our journey, we started with drawing an attack tree that's part of our product, a full attack tree, how a specific attacker can get to a specific business uh, critical asset. And then we've seen people sitting in the boardroom and they're, you know, staring in the sky, staring in the a mobile phone and so on, they don't understand that, right? But when you say, hey, listen, you know that an internet attacker with only two steps can get access to your healthcare data in your organization, that's interesting. They don't care how, how you can do that, but they do care what you can do and what will be the consequences out of that. So here is the model that we propose. First part of the model is be able first to draw and understand your technical risk profile. You need to, under, to understand that. You cannot translate it into the business risk without understanding first the technical risk. Being able to do that, there are multiple ways to do that from security assessments, red teaming, penetration testing. You all know about that. Those are different capabilities, but the point is how do you collect the data and make sure that you understand the business risk or the organizational risk and not only a specific network, a specific application, or I don't know, a specific interface uh, in your organization. Try to understand the business scope. <coughs> That's one. one. Once you've done that, being able to quantify the likelihood, the way that we do that, by the way, is by generating or creating a specific attack tree. That means starting from a threat source, can be external attacker, internal attacker, and so on. On the other side of the graph, we put the business critical assets, what we are trying to protect. That's a very simple question, right? What are you trying to protect? It's not a simple answer in most cases, but the question is very simple. Once you put that this way, and you try to draw the lines, how you can you get from here to here? That's something the visibility, only the visibility there can be very useful. Then being able to translate the data, again, this is a, a tricky one, translate the data into actual quantified risk. Again, there are models for that. If you're interested, of course, I'm happy to show you uh, how we do that or provide you with some practical tools after the presentation. That's, of course, uh, something it would love to, to do in any case. But the point is that being able to give some kind of indication, this specific attack out that I see here, it's a likely one, not very likely, not likely at all, 
even that simple kind of representation would be very good to understand and then you can just you know put them from the most probable route to the least probable route in just a simple explanation nothing detailed just which kind of an attacker can threaten which kind of business critical asset that will be a very good step forward and finally when it comes to your budget cyber security requirements and so on there is today in the market there is a motion um, that is very compliance oriented to be honest right a tick the a tick the box exercise not in a bad way i'm not trying of course to say that this is something that cannot be efficient it can be if executed correctly but the point is that when you follow for example the nist framework that i mentioned uh, before there, there are great things there right um, security operations identity management asset management um, a lot of things that are very important to the organization but how do you know what is first what is the most important thing when you start do you need everything everything important at the same level the way that you can get to this conclusion is by really analyzing the previous step that we mentioned you have the most probable route in your organization great let's go with this one in this most probable route let's identify the specific part that mitigating it will provide highest value for money and that's what they like to hear in the board of directors what is the highest return on investment that's where we need to invest your first dollar there are algorithms to do that some of them are famous ones like optimization algorithms or for for falkerson like we use for example that's a very nice one you can take the algorithm use the data that you have there and based on this data to be able to say in a very clear way what is more important than what so again the stages if i need just to summarize get visibility into the technical risk try to translate it into the business capabilities or business objectives by just drawing a map which attacker can get access to which data asset and based on that start to put the relevant priorities on those items that are the most important in the end of the process you get you end up with something like here you can see in the, at the top at the bottom right which kind of an attacker can harm which kind of business critical asset and what is the maybe severity level of that that's i can tell you that is something that we spend around half of the time in a board meeting just discussing that this overall concept that's something that is now becoming a standard um i can tell you that in all board meetings that we pr we are presenting and that's something that became also very usual this interface is being presented of course there are some others that are more detailed but this one is being integrated analyzed and they understand the process in the end right budgets are accepted it's very clear understanding why we need that and in the end we are able to first make the board of directors understand the situation and second to support supporting the cyber security initiatives in the organization thank you very much for your time if you want to get in contact feel free this is my personal email you're more than welcome uh, to reach out and i can send you some materials and we have some materials here as well if you want to take those specific information items back home and see how you can integrate it into your organization thank you very much for your for your time thank you so much <coughs> Thank you so much.